Be me, let's have it go. All right, we here. Kamashi, Kamishi, Yum Sukal. So that'll be what? Fifth day, fifth Yum of Sukal. Isn't that right? Because that's actually the day, but this is actually the. Uh-uh, Shashi, I'm right. Shiny, hold on. Shiny, right? Shiny. Shiny. That's right, Shiny. Which will be the what, brother? Second day. So this is, who else can do that but him? Be the fifth day, the fifth yun of Sukkot. Well, I probably need to put the, Swiss shiny. Well, y'all know what I'm saying anyway. Come and see, because this is the third, this is the fifth night. Remember, I, we keep our days from evening to evening. So it would have been Rabbi, Rabbi E if the sun was still up. So we're already in Come and see. Come and see, right? Our fifth day. Right? But this is also the second day of so called. Y'all got it? Make sense, make a little better sense now. Now y'all got to be Hebrew, Hebrew talking to, I mean, Abarim talking to Abarim. That's good? Yeah. Um, let's look at um, your Yukonon. Yeah, Yukonon. Yeah, Ukonon, chapter. Preachers, y'all ain't off the hook. Y'all don't know how this going to go. Especially with whatever they had today. I was talking to somebody today. I told them, I said, I think these folks are trying to kill us. They said they knee done started hurting. I told the brother Leroy, he told me that. He said, man, my knee been killing me lately. I said, the government, they're trying to kill him. <laughs> I told him, man, my stomach tore up. He said, mine will too. I said, they had him. Both our phone be dropping. I said, boy, it's getting scary, ain't it? Ain't that right? It's like the twilight zone, ain't it? But we hanging in here and we don't get a diaper, get that, uh, what you call that little cup with a spoon. How many of y'all, Malcolm, you remember that? First time y'all got a telephone before Alexander Graham Bell? When I had them styrofoam cup in that string. I'm right here. Speak up. Remember? Don't worry, I had to be there. Don't worry about it. How many of y'all used to play? Y'all remember y'all had the cups baby back then? Put it down. Yeah. Well, thank the Lord. All right. Appreciate everybody. Y'all all right. Y'all a tough audience. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? I told you I like you both time. That good. Ethan, you going to be up today? Which is possible. Okay. We appreciate everybody. All right. You good, brother? Brother Chris, you good? You had um, dialysis today? Yeah, okay, I know, I know you get tired. I know it take a lot draining that blood and pressing your way like that. That's a big sacrifice. Like you said, that's how I read the server. Right. Ain't that right? Everybody, we got to press our way in the way in it. If we're going to be saved. This is yeah. Yeah, Ukanon chapter 6, verse 44. Let's just look at a couple of things. I'm going to try to get out of the way and not hold y'all up too long so I pass and get a chance to get up in. Hey, pregnant Mexican. Good to see you. It's always good to see Mexicans made, isn't it? Knowing there's more of them coming. Isn't that right? Who is a tough crowd? Y'all all right? <laughs> so what I had to do to get a funny out of y'all? Do I have to poot? Poot on the mic? That'll get it? How many of y'all want to hear me poot on the mic? Okay, these are my filthy members right here. I know. <laughs> Three of y'all jokers. I know there's something wrong with these people. You know? What'd you say? You don't mind it? Yeah. That's four of y'all. <laughs> Isn't that right? What if I put in Japanese? You like that? Yeah. <laughs> Pupata. <laughs> How you poop pata? I'm just, do they poop the same way like over here though? They're the same noise. Cause, you know I mean, with all that stuff they eat, is it like continuous or break up? It's like, ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm saying? Because every country do it different. Is it the same poop? But it smell worse over there. Couldn't be, yeah, I know that right. You eat some berry cabbage, man, on a skunk. That stuff gonna kill you anytime. All right, listen, all right, listen. Maybe they can bottle up and sell it. Isn't that right? How you doing about that, Moses? You trying to hold on. How many of y'all know he gonna mess up and he gonna get that lad to marry? You can try all you want to fight it. That lad to marry, look at him, he about to get it now. Go ahead and hold on. Last to marry it on the way. All right, listen. Yeah, you can not in chapter 6 and verse 44. Listen to the book. 
No man can come to me. No man can come to me. Except the Father, which have sent me, draw him. What happens, son? And I will raise him up at the last day. Tell him what's written. It is written in the prophets. And they shall do what? Be all taught of all Ahim. They shall all be taught of all Ahim. Listen. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father. What happens, son? Cometh unto me. Cometh unto me. Now, we start to look at a couple of things, what we have to do in order to put ourselves in that situation. Let me see the, uh, the book of Luke. For some reason, now this might be wrong. So I probably don't need to fool with that damn. If it might be wrong, it don't make sense to fool with it, doesn't it? So if I call it, oh, now the book going to be right. 923 is fine. Let's see if we look at a couple of things. The book of Luke. I think they try to say pronunciation with his name would be something like um, Lucas, mm -hmm. not Luke. Don't hold me to that now, but just put it somewhere. Lucas, L-U-C-A-S. Do not hold me to this. Y'all hear me? This is me. I'm out there. I'm going to put this on him to side. Why am I doing this? We're just putting this somewhere. This ain't got nothing to leave, as long as I make it in the kingdom. Isn't that right? I'm just coming up wrong now. Y'all going to be in trouble. So y'all see, I put it in that box. I said, just put it somewhere. Lucas. Y'all got it? <laughs> all right, listen. 923, listen. And he said to them all, mm -hmm. if any man will come after me, tell him what he have to do, son. Let him deny himself. And do what? And take up his cross daily. And do what? And follow me. Listen. For whosoever will save his life. What happens, son? Shall lose it. Whosoever should try to save his life will lose it. What happens, son? But whosoever will lose his life. But whosoever will lose his life. For my sake. For my sake. The same shall save it. Listen. For what is a man advantage? If what happens, son? If he gain the whole world. And do what? Lose himself. Yes. Or be cast away. Mm-hmm. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the Kudash Malachi. Well, now what we start to look at when we talk about coming after him, we talked about denying ourselves. Kind of put us almost in a sense of what we looked at concerning somewhat of a sacrifice. Isn't that right? Allowing yourself to go without in order to try to, to obtain. So now we have to start looking at what are some of the things that begin to get in the way. At the book of Matthew, Yahoo, chapter 13. I won't be before y'all long because I don't know when something's going to break out in hell. At the Yahoo. What chapter I told you again? 13. Verse 13. <laughs> Verse 11. Let's see what it says. Listen. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Shamayim. So we understand why he spake in parables, right? We understand sometimes when we read the book, why is it sometimes people comprehension is not there, it's not for them to comprehend it. Because he says, given to them to know concerning the mystery. But to the others, what happens, son? But to them, but to them it is not given. But to them it's not given. Come on. For, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Yes. And he shall have more abundance. Yes. But whosoever hath not, what happens, son? from him shall be taken away even that he had. Come on, son. Therefore speak I to them in parables. That's why I was speaking to them in parables. Come on, son. Because they seeing, see not. Yes. And hearing, they hear not. Yes. Neither do they understand. Yes. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Yahshiahu. Yes. Which said, by hearing ye he shall hear. And so when he was talking about by hearing, hold on, back me up again. By seeing, back me up again, by hearing, what happened? By by hearing, ye he shall hear, uh -huh. and shall not understand. And shall not understand. What has to happen in order for it to be an open understa uh, understanding? We got to look at the paw. Right? The paw. What do we typically look at the paw at first? Oh, yeah. 
good. You use utterance? Wow, that's a big word. What made you say utterance? You say utterance for the Paul? Hmm? No, he actually right. He actually right. That's a good pickup. Utterance. That's a good one. We look at the olive. At the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. This is Luke 24, 44. Listen. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moshe and in the prophets and in the Tahalim concerning me. Then open he their understanding. So that's why we look at the Paul. We look at the opening. He opened their understanding. That they might understand the scripture. That they might get utterance. So this is what we start to look at what he began to do. So he looked at it being closed. Back at the 24th chapter, I mean, back at the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew Yahoo. We just jumped out for a second, some kind of way, hopefully. All this are tied to something. Huh? One can only hope. This is um, 13th chapter of the book of Matthew Yahoo. What verse we left off? 15? 14. 14. Let's read down. Listen. By hearing ye shall hear. Yes. And shall not understand. Come on. And seeing ye shall see. Uh huh. And shall not perceive. What did we talk about seeing before? Y'all said the I? The un? Listen. For this people's heart is wax gross, mm -hmm. and their ears are dull of hearing, mm -hmm. and their eyes they have closed. Yes. Lest at any time they shall see with their eyes, yes. and hear with their ears, yes. and should understand with their heart, what happens, son? and should be converted, yes. and I should heal them. Come on, son. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Yes. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, yes. and understandeth it not, what happens, son? then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Yes. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Come on, son. But he that received the seed into stony places, yes. the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yes. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. Yes. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. That's what happens, son. What happens, son? By and by, he is offended. That's for all of us. Now when you start to look at, when you talk about anon, or you start talking about the um, then you start to talk about persecution coming in. Once your eyes become open, once you begin to take on sight, once you begin to take on understanding, y'all hear me? Once you begin to take on an appearance or a resemblance, uh, you begin to take on knowledge. Y'all got me? So when you look at open understanding, you look at something that's going to happen to them, you're going to take on knowledge. There's no way to get understanding and not take on knowledge. How does it take up back over to the um? And this is what we begin to set back and consider. Now when these things happen, now you got to look. He said persecution, tribulation, all these things going to come on because of the word. Some of the situation that face you guys now, you got to look at why. It's because now your understanding coming open. It's because now you're starting to take on sight. Now you're getting in a situation where you can be healed. Now when these things happen, the first thing we typically do is try to run back to what we call the norm or what we've been accustomed to. This is how we wind up going back to lying or going back to covenants or going back to masturbation or going back to something so we can try to use it for some type of idea to try to use it as an escape or a justification of not doing or coming to compliance of what we hear. You got me? That's what we do when persecution, tribulation, come in because of the word. We, we were enlightened or we took on the oom that we took on sight to learn the proper month and time to be here now versus what we had been doing. Y'all got me? Now, when you learn this, what wound up happening? Some of y'all jobs on the line. 
kids' education's on the line. There's a lot of things on the line. So what you hear, he's telling you, the word went out, a seed was sown. Now, where it fell in and where you allowed to happen, whether you just blocked it or act like it don't exist or don't show up or don't comply and don't obey, then you understand you leave the wicked one that opportunity. He come in, he can take it away, that which you've heard. But now you understand when you're allowed to come in, that's his job. He's going to come in, now you're going to get persecuted. I think it's dumb what you're in. I've never heard of a stupid religion where people worship and do something, you turn around, you do it again the next month. What difference does it make if you love God? If you believe in Jesus, you don't have to do all that stuff anyway. Then why do they have to go to church on Sunday? If you love Jesus, why you got to go on Sunday? Amen. I think it's stupid you go on Saturday. I think it's really dumb that you go on Sunday. Especially when you have no letter, no commandment, or no writing that come in to justify or institute what you're doing. So now you start looking at it, you start taking a lot of embattlement when you start to hear the word. Y'all got me? So now we got to start looking at what is it that we have to do. So he looked at, if you're going to come after me, you have to deny yourself. Y'all got me? Because a lot of times, it ain't always just what people say. It's sometimes what you yourself might have and you might battle in yourself. It's things and thoughts that come in your mind. When Shaul told us how the weapons of our warfare were not, but mighty through, all I hang to the pulling down, casting down. How many times your mind say, you know what? I mean, I, mean, I, I got to do what I got to do. I know he understands. I mean, I mean, it ain't my fault they got it wrong, is it? Let's be honest, it ain't the member's fault we got it wrong. Am I correct? So what we have, come on now, y'all. Ain't nobody said, ain't nobody thought, come on. Why are we, why are stupid behind and get it right the first? Look at Danielle back there. Last. Give Danielle another demerit. Because she's like, oh, he preaching that thing. That's what I was saying. Give Megan one too. She's like, I was thinking the same thing. That's two demerits on her. So, but just being fun. You know, just making fun with you guys. But just looking at, that's a natural thing that happened. The reason why we were challenged to try to see, I told you before, as saints, we had to be able to transition. Regardless of the situation, we're just a people that transition. Y'all got it? Regardless of how things might come out of it, because it comes in to show whether or not you'll be obedient or not when you hear the word. You got me? But a lot of times we have so many other obligations, even in relationships or prior commitments we make with other people or obligation on jobs or whatever it might be, or just our own well-being or our own, uh, our own fetishes we might have. So a lot of times it comes in and it causes us to question things. And we don't question them a lot of time for the good. We question them for the reason of trying to get a justification of why we don't have to. You got me? So now we look at this is why we have to have the word because the word allows to come in and combat it. It doesn't mean you're not human because it don't come up. It's just a matter of how you deal with the situation when it arrives. Do I allow the word to come in and combat it or I allow myself to do as the book told me in the book of Marshall Lee? Lean not where, brother? And all my what? What I supposed to do? And then what are you going to do? He going to put me exactly where I need to be. Isn't that right? He's going to show me exactly why I need to be. When you look at him directing your path, just like when he came to the sun, we looked at before, how he put the two thieves on the side of him. Even when it came down to Balaam, when the ass sat and the ass wound up running in the field, what did he do? He heads them in with the two walls. If you start to acknowledge him, he's going to direct your path. And a lot of times we don't give him that opportunity because a lot of times we don't pull back. We just continue on in the thing. Versus continue on as he told us in the faith. Rooted and ground, and be not settled, because that's going to put us right back at the seed. Rooted and ground, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which would preach to every creature. This is what we sat down and we started to consider. Them. What are the things that we allow to come in and begin to block us from getting where we have to be? What's the thing that Hannah did sometime when we come? They had a song years ago, your body here with me. Your mind's on the other side. So now we start to what you messing me around. You know what some people, a woman to say, a man to say? I'm here with you, though. But if I can see and feel that you're not giving me total commitment from what you're getting, I would rather you will cross down. You hear me? When the Most High looked at when he took us and he, he served us, separated us, served us from another people, he told us, make no mention of other gods. I don't even want you talking about it because when we're together, I want to just know I got your complete and total mind. I want to know that everything about you and everything you do, he told us how to love it. How was it, brother? All, your heart. all of it. With all your soul. Isn't that right? With everything you had, I want you to love me. That way, you, when you give me all, you don't have anything to give to anybody else. But the truth be told, we're not fully committing our whole heart to him. This is why we lack what we try to come and get, the simplicity of salvation. We start with faith. 
There's no need of looking to try to take on something like the spirit when you lack something like faith. Y'all got me? And it's simply because we don't totally commit to him. When you look at our father, Abraham, the man who we look at is we call the father. The only reason we use and call him the father because a father is what, brethren? A begotter or a starter. A starter. We know and he's known for his attribute of faith. When he was given a son that was by promise, by promise, look, he was looking to receive something. And the word of faith said on this wise, according to about the 17th chapter of the book of Barashit, at this time, next year, he was going to visit and Sarah was going to bring forth a son. The book said that was the word of faith, so he waited. You know what the book tells us about the husband? What was it, brother? He waited for the precious fruit. He looked at this man being precious. He waited. Y'all got me? That's why the book said you have need of faith when? After that, because the husbandman waited for the precious fruit. He waited. And after he had received, he was told then, mate, he said, thine only son, whom thou loveth. He wanted a sacrifice. And when you look at a sacrifice, he wants something that you love. Something you don't want, something you don't care for, don't bring it to me. Let's see something in the book of um, Dabarim. Dabarim. All uh, Dabarim. It's U. All Ah. Uh, I see you out there bad. But I love you, though. I know it get off sometimes. That's fine. We're on the same planet, though. All uh, Dabarim, chapter 17, verse 1. Listen. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto Yahuwah thy Elohim any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness. Y'all hear that? Well, it's a blemish or any evil favoredness. Yes. For that is an abomination. For that is an abomination. Come unto on, Yahuwah thy Elohim. Yes. If there be found among you within any of thy gates. What happens, son? Which Yahuwah thy Elohim. What word are we thee. looking for, brother? The dollars. That's right. In any of thy dollars. What happens, son? Which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee. Yes. Man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of Yahuwah thy Elohim, and transgressing his covenant, yeah. and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon, or any of the hosts of Shamayim, which I have not commanded. Mm -hmm. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true. What happened, son? And the thing certain, yeah. that such abomination is wrought in Yasharal. What happened, son? Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman yeah. which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. For what reason, son? At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses yeah. shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. So now what we want to go back and we start to look at at the beginning, we look at the things that he told us were an abomination. Things that we bring before him and we begin to offer before him, it had to be something clean, and we had to look at something that was acceptable. On well, yesterday, um, we talked about in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, when he said, I present you, I beseech you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of Elohim, that ye present your bodies a kodash. So I already know certain things he don't accept. I already know this is not a body he will accept when there are certain behaviors, when they don't meet a certain criteria. When he desired to be in the first year, you couldn't give it to him. It was three and five and 15 years old. Everything had criterias. Ain't right? No curvy spine. Couldn't have one eye. Couldn't have a broken leg. Because he looked at it's going to be a sacrifice. I want something that you will want. I want something that you love. Isn't that right? And I know when he asks you about presenting yourself, he know you love you. Because you love yourself so much that you're afraid of dying. Not that you're afraid of dying for eternal life. You're afraid of other people not liking you. You're afraid of giving up too much of yourself because you love yourself more than you love him. So now, in order for you to prove that you love me, I want you. I put you in a situation where you can exhaust yourself from all your things and you can totally be mine. Sometimes we don't know why things don't happen for some of us. Y'all hear me? 
Because these things hinder us. Let's, look, let's just look at something since my mind going. Matthew Yahoo right quit the 19th chapter. Matthew chapter 19. Jump down and give me about verse 14. Let's see that what I want. Y'all all right? Amen. Let's just look at something. This is the um, 19th chapter of the book of Matthew Yahoo. Give me about verse um, 15. Let's see what that says. Listen. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him. Turn them up just a little bit. Put the mic down by your mouth. Hold on. It's him. It ain't y'all. It's him. Put it down by your mouth. Yeah. Put it down by that donut eater. Put it down a little more. The mic part. Yeah. By that donut eater. So to swallow a whole donut. Cinnamon roll. Don't even bite them. Go on that joker better. They still got all the stuff on them. When they had a special operator, when they just enlarged their throat. When you can swallow them sideways, what do they mean? Give Sister Chantel a demerit. Make sure she get a demerit. And her husband, because he with her. They grew. That's like Hannah Nye Sapphire. You were privy to it. You could have cut it off. Listen to the book. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Listen to this. I want to know what I need to do to inherit eternal life. What do I need to do in order to take on eternal life? Let's see something. And he said unto him. Tell him what he said, son. Why callest thou me good? Yes. There is none good but one, that is, all ahim. Listen. But if thou wilt enter into life. Tell him what he wants, son. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Listen. He saith unto him. Tell him what he said, son. Which? Which one? Which one? Come on, son. Yahushua said, thou shalt do no murder. Do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Two. Thou shalt not steal. Three. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Four. Honor thy father and thy mother. Five. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And what word were you for that? The olive. The hay. You don't get that. Low. The oom, the oom is what I want. Scratch that, make it the oom. Hold on for no, yeah, the nail, the pig, and that's right, the oom, the oo. That's good. Boss, you doing better. And the oo, and come on. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Tell me what happened, son. What lack I yet? What lack I yet? Come on, son. Yahushua said unto him, Yeah. If thou wilt be perfect. Now, if you want to be, what was it, son? Perfect. If you will be what, son? Go and sell. Hold on, what are we talking about again? What are we trying to accomplish? If thou wilt be perfect. Now, if you're going to be perfect, what he told him, son? Go and sell that thou hast. And Go give, and get rid of that which thou hast. And give to the poor. And give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in Shamayim, and come and follow me. What happened, son? But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. Tell him why, son. For he had great possessions. That's the problem with a lot of us. When you start looking at it, in order for y'all to be perfect, you had to wind up changing your whole system. You had to wind up changing how you do things. You had to wind up changing your whole schedule. This is what you had to do in order for you to be perfect. We start talking about a lot of times in order for us to add, we got to deplete some things. In the 12th chapter of the book of Yehuchanan, he tells us, except the corn of wheat, fall into the ground and what? If you die, you lose something. There's no way to die and not lose something. He said, but after that, though, guess what happened? It can bring forth more, more, much fruit. A lot of times we look at it, we let a lot of these natural things we got go. That's, that's to the same verge of killing us. That man looked at that. I mean, at some point, you guys got to realize when you can go too far when you're in something. Let's just be honest. If you've been keeping the commandments, you've been keeping Shabbat, you've been keeping Shabbatun, you've been keeping the high, the high Kodash days, and now a man come up now, he wants you to get rid of everything you got so you can get life. Let's just be honest. At some point, you just got to realize, this might not be for me. But this is what he told us. Now when you start looking at a word, like some people say, I'm looking for a word. Now when the word comes and it got opportunity to fall on good ground, now we look at now persecution. Because I got to start looking. When you have things, you insert, you're in a certain group of people. There are, I mean, just using you for instance. 
with the money you made in, in the career you had, you dealt with a certain type of people. Honestly, a lot of people in this room are not people that were in your group. Am I correct? A lot of people in this room were not in your financial status. Am I correct? So now you got to start looking at something. You tell me to go sell what I got, Dave, everything I got, and let it go. You can't still be. Are you still with those same people? You can't have, you cannot not have the things you had and still be with the same people you're with. So this set of sense is killing it. This is, a, this is, in a sense, a point of death. Because you lose more than just my things. I lose people. I lose privilege. Y'all hear me? I lose status quo. Isn't that right? How people look at me, I lose an image. And a lot of times, people allow this to get in their way. They don't realize, but if you're willing to give these things up, you can wind up gaining. And he looked at, if I keep these things, this just being practical, I can help more people with these things. If I had these things, I can serve God better, as they quote unquote say, God, opposed to Elohim. And you don't realize, in order to get where I'm trying to get you, you got to be willing to get rid of these things. Let's just be honest. The average of us is with the same state he is. If the most high came right now, we got possession. And he said, let go of what you had. What I need to get right now? What I need to get? You know I got to get understanding. Because, I mean, you want to just make sure. I don't, listen. I ain't got no problem doing what he said, but I'm going to need to get some understanding. When he's saying, get, I'm kind of like how cough was, we'll say Peter, because how Peter was, if he, you know, asked me three times. Ask me thrice. He, don't, he, can't, ask me, he can't ask me three, he got to ask me thrice. <laughs> if he don't say thrice, then I ain't even Bible. <laughs> Mind you, the Bible transliterated. So I'm looking for thrice. Then it need to come down on the sheet. And if it came the way I answered, he said thrice. It's still some more. Mm. I just want to be sure. You just want a confirmation at that point. The confirmation for us always got to be what we start out for. The truth be told, when a lot of people wind up coming and hearing the word, it's just like Yahushua, when he started out with about 84 disciples, when things start coming, people thin out. Because a lot of times people come, just like he told them in the sixth chapter of the book of Yuyukanon, you sought me because you had the fishes and low and you were filled. But he told them, don't labor for the meat that perishing, but labor for that meat which endure unto everlasting life. And a lot of times, that's where a lot of our labor come out to. A lot of things we do, we kind of serve still in a Christian format. To the mere fact of we hear the word, but we still try to hold on to that carnal lifestyle of things the way we do. It's okay to have things. I told y'all many times, it's not a sin to have things. It's a sin when things got you. It wasn't a sin because this man had things. Let's see some what Timothy said. What um, Shaul told Timothy. Uh, first Tim. First Timothy. I call him Tim. Ain't that right? Y'all should have came by the boom boom. Right? You know, guess who was out the other night, uh, Leon? Satchmo. That's what I call him when he come around my place. I call him Tim. This is on First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1. I mean 6 and about 19. Better than one, six seventeen. 617. Listen to the book. Charge them that are rich in this oh, world. You hear what he said? Charge them that are rich in this world to sell that which they have and give it to the poor. Listen. That they be not high-minded. Listen. Nor trust in uncertain riches. See, that's, that's where the problem comes in. People say, I don't get it. Why such and such got something? Why I don't have anything? Because some of us, if we get it, truth be told, you wind up trusting them uncertain riches. They're uncertain because they're not giving to you. According to the book of Kahalath, the lecture, the preacher, he said the race not given to the swift. Not a battle to the strong. Isn't that right? No wisdom to men of understanding. But what did he say happened? Time and chance. That's why he said they're un uncertain. It's just time and a chance. Then you, had, you, you, you ran track before. You ran. Did you ever run against somebody that was faster than you before or, would, or predict to beat you and you wound up winning that day? Time and chance. Time and chance. See, they could be trusting in. I already know this is a shoe in. They got people that have odds. It can be football game. They have odds on it. That's a shoe in. They bound, but it'd be time and chance. You didn't calculate a farmer, didn't calculate a farmer, did you? You ain't you ain't calculate a, a, a touchback. You ain't calculate somebody wind up um, blocking a, a, a kick, a, a, a extra point. There's a lot of things you don't wind up calculating, but that's why he let you know all this stuff is uncertain. A lot of times we sit here and we look at we've been holding position and jobs and relationships. Everything you got is uncertain. All it takes is a whim or a turn of people. It don't take a whole lot for people to drop you a turn from you. Everything is uncertain. So we start to look at we trust in the living Allahim. When you start to trust in these things, you put your heart in them. It's a sure win. You're going to fall. It's a sure win. It's going to take you down because that's where your heart at. He told you that where a man's heart at, guess what's going to happen? That's where it's treasure. 
He already knew when he asked the man, the commandment. He already knew what, what a smart ass is going to say. I've been doing that. Which one? I hope he throw that adultery out. I'm waiting on that joker. Cover it. I hope he throw that idol God out. Got it. Waiting on it. Which one? I'm going to see if he even know him. Well, if you want to be perfect. If you want to be perfect. Get rid of what you got. And you can have treasures in Shamayim. That's a problem. Because me letting go of what I got to get something later, that ain't a smart business move. I didn't get what I got because I let stuff go based on something down the road unless I could see it. Y'all got me? So which means I've been keeping the law. And this is what Shaul told you about the law. What did he tell you about the law? What am I looking for about the law? The law is not a faith. Thank you, Ryan. That's what the problem is. You know what, and you know what people use that at, Ryan? See, you, you ain't even going to be saved anyway trying to keep the law. This is where you're an idiot because he never told you not to keep it. He told him you're going to end in the life. The law is a road map. The book told you it was our schoolmaster to get us to the Mashiach. But now when you start talking about if you're going to reach perfection, that's where we got to be, then you're going to have to have faith. The law is not a faith. We already seen. As Moshe told the man that duffed these things, yeah. come on. That's not faith. We already know what's going to happen. If I offer up some sacrifice, some incense, strange incense, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to get a blessing? What's going to happen? You know, according to who? According to the law, who do we know did it? The sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron. The book told you he killed them because they offered us strange incense. That's the law. When the man picked up sticks on, the, on Shabbat, what happened? He died. We got evidence to show that's not faith. We see it. We can see that. Now we start talking about me getting rid of something I got right now that's present day I can use right now and it benefits me right now based on something to come? That's a little tight. That's tight. That's tight, Dave. That's something to really look at. But this is what you got to have if you're going to be perfect. Y'all got me? The law is good to start off when you're a child, but you're going to have to grow. Where was that again? And what else you going to wind up need? You're going to have to wind up growing in the own. You got to grow in the knowledge. You, come, you got to come in the knowledge so you'll understand the olive. Y'all got me? So you can get some utterance. Y'all got me? All these things we're going to look at, which where your utterance is going to be him with the ball. Y'all got me? So let's look at something. Listen. Continuing at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, chapters 6, six and, and verse, 17. what are we at, 18? Still at 17. Still at 17. Charge them that are rich. In this world, that they do what? Be not high-minded. High-minded. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Talk to me, son. But in the living Allahim. See, in the living Allahim. What else, son? Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. See that? He giveth to us abundantly. All things to enjoy. Excuse me. All things to enjoy. What happens, son? That they do good. That they be rich in good works. See that? Now he, he gave you all these things to enjoy abundantly. But he told you where you need to be abundant, where your riches need to show at. Show me how rich you are in good works. Let me, see how, let me see how consistent you are in living, in your loving, in your obedience. This is where you need to be rich at. See, these things here are just something we just use. This stuff just a tool. But the truth be told, these things we're supposed to use wind up using us. We wind up becoming servants to it, to where we can't even obey. The truth be told, that's why we put in such a situation, and it was need for that we came into the knowledge of it, and it, and it changed our schedule. It changed our day because now it started to show whether you be obedient or not. So like Brother Mike, no doubt you could have stayed up there and kept going. Like you say, you wait no money, they come in, you had to jump up and go. It's sure whether or not you'll be obedient or not. Anybody can go if the money came in. Who couldn't have came if your money came in? If your money lined up right for you. Who couldn't have came in it wouldn't have been if it's convenient? A free car sitting outside loaded up with money, stacked up, more than you even need it. Running, waiting on you, the kind you like and how you want it. Who couldn't have came? But it takes somewhere. I got to move, shift something. Something might not come, but I still got to stand. I got to trust him and do it. Might, this might wind up breaking up some things for me. This might wind up putting me in a situation. I might be in a worse situation than I've been in, but this going to show whether or not you love him. Y'all yeah. got me? Yeah. Just like what he asked Abraham to do. He made sure, this is the son I gave you a promise. It will been nothing off of the other boy. He ain't by my wife anyway. He not by my wife anyway. But this is the one I told you to promise about. Offer him up. Let me have him. 
He had to look at, but this the one I know, like people do when they serve these jobs. I know the Lord gave me this job. I know he gave it to me because I should have flunked the interview. I know he paid because you know what? I had the urine test. I wound up coming up dirty. I see duck better laugh. They're going to get you duck. So, I mean, just a lot of things. There were people, let me say not the drug test because that wouldn't be, but just how people think on some other end. There were people more qualified than me. I knew should have got the job, and they gave it. I know he gave me this job. Y'all hear me? I know this relationship I got. I know it had to be of him. But now he told you, I know how you love that job. I know how you love that woman, how you love that man. Make me a sacrifice. I need something you love. I need something near and dear to you. So he knew when Abraham was going to have to offer up that son, that's something he loved. And the book told her, being now, what was again? What was again he won? Weak in faith. Some people faith weak. That's why we have to keep coming back. We keep trying to make sure we come and add to it. I was trying to show lifting because he wasn't weak in faith. A lot of us strong on the bench now. How you lifting on your faith, though? What kind of, what you curling on faith? That's where you come up. That's where you're sloppy. People, there's some folk got some good technique on lifting and go heavy. But let me see what you do on faith. Huh? Cause you know what they wind up causing them not to do the mere fact they talk about his strength? Cause him not to stagger. You pick up something and it's heavy for you. It can wind up buckling. Ain't that right? Not Abraham. Huh? Man was a straight dead lifter. Snatch down, get it, come straight up with it. You know why? One week in faith. Isn't that right? When he went, his son even told him, I can see the wood. I don't see the offering. He said, my son, all of him provides. Why we don't have that kind of confidence? And then we ask for it. But then this is what happened. He put you in a situation so you can obtain it. This is where you put in a situation. We ask for things that we see, but then you don't realize there's a situation you had to be in. We didn't actually know we had that faith until we were put in a situation. Then you don't know where you're at until you put in a situation and the call is made. What's the call? That young man, no doubt, you'd have asked him he had faith, he had faith. Of course I got faith, you stupid idiot. I'm keeping all the commandments and the laws. But that's not a demonstration. A demonstration is going to be complying in some things that vary off from the law. When I say vary off from the law, they don't go against it, but this is something you can't actually see it, but you're going to have to believe. You don't have to believe something you can't see now. You've been trusting the commandment based upon you saw some things. There were some things spoken. There were some things that happened to people that didn't comply to it. But now I'm telling you to trust that there's a reward now. Trust that there's a reward if you do what I told you to do. It might not be now. It's going to be in the hereafter. It's going to really put you out. He might have would have done it. He would have said, just down the road, not many days hence. I could gamble on something like that, not many days hence. Isn't that right? That could be some hours. That could be some weeks. I could hold out that long. But you start talking about Shamayin, and I'm a young man. I'm subject to live two. I'm subject to live 900 years, 600 years. I'm subject to do at least 70 years. If I'm 18, 19, and you talking about some of them getting Shamayin, that's a long time to wait. But then it starts to show and to demonstrate whether or not I got faith. Y'all with me? So sometimes what has to happen? We need a little motivation. We need a little motivation. Let me show you something. Give me that Roman 12 once since I called it. Romans 12 and 1. We need this. Amen. <clears throat> Listen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahuwah, that ye present your bodies. Your in what? You say your goods? You say my goods? I, be I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahuwah, that you present your bodies. Your who? Your bodies. A what, son? A living sacrifice. I want you to offer me up you. Not your money, not your good, not your things. I want you to give me you. Because that's the greatest thing you love. The only thing between any of us that's holding up between us and him is us. Ain't nothing holding us back. It ain't a job. It ain't a girlfriend, a boyfriend, it ain't a husband, it ain't a wife, it's not our children. It's us. Yep. It's because how I love, it's because of what I like, yep. it's because of what I want to do. There's absolutely nothing stand between what we need to do for him but us. Yep. Nobody. It's all us. Because yep. I attach to some things that make me feel good enough to where I'll risk my relationship with him. 
and because of some other things that I have and commitments that I like being attached to that keep me from totally complying to what he want me to do. So what I need to do is do this. I need you. I need you. I need you. So what you won't do, he'll wind up putting you in a situation where it can become you. Make sense? Let's look at some. At the book of Barashit. Barashit. Chapter 47. Uh, jump down, give me about verse 11. We'll read down. Barashit, chapter 47, and about verse 11. Listen to the book. And Yusuf placed his father and his brethren and gave them For a those possession. those don't know the name, Yusuf. Yusuf. Listen. And gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best place, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Y'all hear that? Now you know how we got there. When Yusuf told Pharaoh concerning our coming in, our forefathers, how they were coming in to large into Mezarim, he started to tell them about coming into Mezarim, Mazarim, Mezarim, they gave us the best of the land. When you find the name Misarim, I got to learn how to write it in the Hebrew for you. Kind of got an idea, but we'll leave it. You'll have it already, how they have it written in the English in your Bible. But the reason why we called the name they got Misarim, we actually gave them that name. We gave them that name because they came from a certain people. I hope you guys are starting to give me the 10th chapter of the book of Barashit. The name Egypt is not a, it's not a name that was an ancient name. I gave y'all another name for me. It was Kimi. Kimi Mu. Kimi Mu was that actually one of their historical names. Y'all got it? It meant people, they were black people of a black land. Commit K E M E T. Didn't I give y'all that name? Yes. Oh, ooh, my knee almost went out. If I'd have failed, that'd been ugly. I know some fall prophet been happy, but I guarantee I'd have failed and said something about their mama. Which is black land. Which is the black people. Y'all got the name? The black people, the black land, and black people. This is the 10th chapter of the book of um, Barashit, 10 and 1 be fine. Listen. Now these are the generations of the sons of Nuak, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Nuak, let me write that down too. Some of them don't know his name either, do they? We got our people that don't know, so we got to make sure they know Nuak. Nuak, that is his name. His name means settled. You find out about, I think, about the eighth chapter. Or so about the book of Barashit, you'll find out the ark was settled. So it goes with his name, Settle. Settle. Who told us about that, brother? What happened, Beasel? What is it, that? Who did you say saying it? Cough. He told him, after that you suffer a while, he make you perfect. Strengthen, or you can just say new ark. Settle. The ark had to be settled. Listen. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These are the three sons of new ark. Come on. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Listen. The sons of Japheth, Listen. Gomer, and Go. Magog, yeah. and Madai. Magog. Now you find the Russian people. 
That's where you find the people from Russia. You find we talked about in the book of Yakaziah, we talked about Magog and Gog. So now you know where they ascended from. They ascended from the sons of they ascended from the sons of um, from Newark. And they came from Japhat. Y'all got it? Listen. Gomor and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Taraz. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. So now you know where these white Jewish people come from. They tell you they are Ashkenazi Jews. Now does it make sense that these will actually be our people? Listen to it now, what he told you about them. And Rephath and Togarma. Now you would think if you're going to change a Bible and steal a people, I would never come back and tell y'all that I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. That's right. Now, this is bad. You done stole the people, stole the language, translate a book into English, make us learn it. And you clearly see here, he's telling you now, these are the sons of Newark. There's no way nobody else could have gotten on the earth without coming through these boys. Listen. And the sons of Javan. Listen. Elisha and Tarshish, Hittim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided. Divided in their land. That's how they got into Russia and Germany and Polish. That's how they got into Europe. They were Gentiles. Listen. Everyone after his tongue. Listen, everyone after his language. That's why they speak Yiddish. They don't speak Abarim. There's no reason to learn their language. Listen. After their families and their nations. Listen. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Mizraim. Fut. You hear that? That's, uh, those are the Egyptians. Mizraim. This is what we call them. So now you know where the Egyptians come from. Who else, son? And Put, Put. and Canaan. So now you know exactly. We talked about Put before. We talked about the Ethiopians. Now you see why the Ethiopians and the Egyptians were so close. They all come from the same lineage. The book of Yeshayahu, he told us how he was going to take down Ethiopia. He said they were the pride of Egypt. Mizarim, because they're they are brothers. They're all clan. They're all related. These people made a fool. Then we have black people running around going, yeah, I'm Ethiopian. Why are you claiming these people? It's just a blessing that we are able now, through the plan, of, through the sun coming, that it allow us the opportunity that we can receive the spirit regardless of where we come out from. Isn't that right? Just like we found with Naomi and with Ruth. Isn't that with Ruth? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. We find how she was. Your people. Right. Your Allahim. Right. My, well, that's what we had to do. We had to convert. But in order for that to happen, guess what she had to do? She had to leave them behind. She couldn't go back and visit her people. She was clearly told to go back to her people. Was she not told after her husband died? Yeah. Go back to your people. Not my people. So we started talking about if any man would come after me, let him. What was again? Why wouldn't, it, why wouldn't just a natural instinct kick in me to go back to my people? Because I realized when I connected to you, my people weren't my people anymore. That's why a lot of you guys lack the simplicity or lack the spirit. Because the truth be told, sooner something happens, who you connect back to? Right back to your family. Unlike Ruth, she didn't. She stayed and she followed her. She like, no, I don't have any more kids in my womb. You'll wait for me to get a son and to form the real and be aged enough for you to get him? Not so. It's not possible. But she stayed there, and look how the Most High blessed. He blessed her. She wound up getting with Boaz, who in turn wound up having a son, Obed, who in turn wound up having a son, Jesse, who gave us a son, Daoud. Huh? So now we start to look at when you stand according to faith, he'll bless. He'll bless. And that's what we lack a lot of times. She stood on faith. Reality for her is just like for us. Reality for us is Go back where you came from. Not her. Her end was looking at regardless of the loss of her husband and her father-in-law and the things they had, she still had a mind to serve Allahim. Why is it you guys hadn't even lost nothing you ain't got a mind to serve? Then you don't realize in order to get you to full compliance a lot of times, you got to lose some things. Let's see what he said. 47, uh, give me back to the 47th chapter of the book of uh, Forty-second chapter, forty-seven chapter, book of Barashit. What verse we left off at? Well, verse twelve. I'll tell you all this too before we go back. You, you know what's amazing? I was telling the minister. I was talking to the brothers last night. Everything going just like he planned it. Everything. 
All those people over there, not one of them belong over there. Not one of them white, Arab-skinned people belong there. How y'all been watching the news about them going? I mean, where they been escaping to? Why not Africa? I couldn't imagine if I'm an African, and I've been real, and I'm generation to generation of African, how I wind up leaving here to go to Europe. Why am I jumping on boats and drowning to make it to Europe when I can just go across in the other regions of Africa? This is why I've been real. This is my lineage. This is why I come. Why are all these people running all of a sudden, everybody running back to Europe? Because Europe know this is your mess. They stole the Egyptian. They stole Mezzarine and moved them into Nigeria, put them in other areas. They stole some of the Ethiopians. Well, Ethiopians, some of them jokes still now. They stole us. They displaced us. And they stole and took these people and placed them in those regions. And now, soon as something done hit, look at every one of them. Every one of them fleeing to Europe. All them claim the white man their problem. They claiming the white man coming on their land is why they land defiled. Why are you going to some defiled white people? Because you know you belong to them and you one of them. Nobody asking any question. Why they ain't running to Asia? Asia ain't got no boatload of them coming over. You closer to Asia than you are to Europe. Why are these people not going to Asia? Because they know they're not Asian. They know they're white. And they know where they're going, straight back home. That's why they drown, they kids drown, they march, and they living in them camps, and they sitting there, because they know this is how we were found in the first place, quake cave dwellers, homeless, living on the street. That's how they were found. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. If I got displaced in Georgia, I'm going to leave Georgia, and I'm going to try to go to Mexico. Is that going to make sense? Or it's going to make sense I'm going to go to another part of the United States. Why are you leaving from the regions of Africa to try to go to Europe? Because you already know where you came from. Do y'all not know all these people are part of the plot of sitting here lying us? Let me tell y'all something. I've told y'all that before. There's not one of these countries that's not behind this lie. Every one of them need to suffer and they need to bear the bulk of putting them people back down now because now your lies come back to hunt you now. Your chickens come home to roost. I love it. All they keep talking about there, how much money costs them every day. United Nation, listen, everybody panicking. They try, why you think Russia even over there now all of a sudden? Russia has never left. This is the first time they left since the 80s when they fought Afghanistan. Because you know why? Russia is a part of the lie too. May God. They know they are part of the line. Why y'all think all they put all the cube, everybody running over here? Because everybody got a better bulk of we've all lied. We've all displaced and put those people there and scattered the original people. Now you got to eat the bulk of it. Saddam Hussein wasn't no Iraqi. That, that was Babylon. Ain't no way in the world that white skinned man could ever been no Babylonian. They were black. The Persian that took us in captivity were black. There's no way they were white and they made a black woman, Hadasha, no queen over no white people. You know how dumb we are, Solomon? We had a woman years ago we'd wear around our neck. Who remember who she was? Nefertiti. Why do we wear Nefertiti around our neck? Because she was a black queen in white Egypt. In black Egypt. Kamimu. She was black. The land was black. Not only the people were black, the land was black. That's how they make a fool out of them. I love watching them display. When I say, listen, I see all them folks, listen, they marching in unison. Y'all seen the picture showing up? They in droves. Can't be turned. They putting train, building fences. They, why am I trying to get into a place I don't belong? I hate the people because I say they infidel, but I'm begging them to let me come into your country and live. You, you supposed to be godless? You eat pork? You're filthy? You're homosexual? But I want to live with you for some reason. Nobody ask these kind of questions, huh? Because you know what? Their natural instinct done kicked in. You the same people. They're the same people. We the only people, listen, it's coming back to haunt them now. But you know what? This got to happen. The only way to put us back there, you got to get rid of all these lies and hypocrites. Huh? Assad, the best thing to happen to us. Best thing to happen. Him and ISIS, they the best thing that ever happened to the black man and black woman. 
Isn't that right? Because they're causing all these people to be displaced. You know what they're learning now? Now you know what it feel like to be black. Huh? Now they know what it feel like to be black, just be thrown somewhere, pushed out, drowned, and killed, and murdered. They still ain't got it bad enough. People still helping them. Nobody helped us. They still with their kids and with their husband and with their wife. They still got their language and got their lies and got their false gods. We left with nothing. You won't find a person or people more resilient than us. Never. You done took us and moved us all over Africa when that didn't work. You put us and made us South American. What a nigga look like Latin dancing. That's an insult to my intelligence. Latin dancing. That's crazy. But that just show you how they lied and made a fool out of us. Go on there and climb a tree barefooted, nigga. You ain't no banana eating barefoot climbing tree, nigga. You let them coops do it. We got that word for one reason. Means monkey or ape. Don't fit us. Let them coops do it. Nigga, sit around here, he ain't never seen a pair of shoes running wide open, butt naked. We were dressed ever since we came out to God. Amen. That don't even make sense. Look how they done got us and made a fool. They're going to show me somebody. Joker done got a little ice cream cone on the front of their penis. Ever since we came out to God and we had on clothes, that don't even make sense telling them lies. Amen. Ain't no way in the world one of our women walked around and had their tits out other than in the God. When the man said him, we don't even believe the book. He told him he brought us out. He made us aprons. He made us what was a pro. Why are we believing these lies they showing us? Amen. Those people are perishing for the lack of knowledge, for the lack of the own. And because you reject the own, he also done rejected you. When I see those people sitting there butt naked like they are, that's not our people. Yeah, man, they make a fool out of us. That's how we, that's what we, that's a lie. That's where he come from. Why do you think he go on the beach and get butt naked? He love new beaches because he ain't never been on, he ain't never had on no clothes. We've been clothes since we come out to God. We made leaves before we even got clothes on. So we'll cut out all the trees and let that white, plain, no buttered flower boot it up all in the sun. We ain't got no thinking that's how we live. Sick of folk making a fool out of us. Right. Anyway, that's how they programmed our people. They domesticated us and put us out there like that. Yeah. Sit there and sit. No, in this day and time, look at how we more modern. We were way more modern than that way before these times come. Yep. All the stuff we own, the stuff we done built and we done put out here, and they gonna go and show me some folks in some new. <laughs> Nigga, what you say? Talking no bird, man. We had a language. Amen. We had mathematics. Amen. We don't build monuments. They gonna sit here on the four leaves and a stick. Man, please. These folks make a fool out of us. Come on, son, finish this up. And Yusuf nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Y'all hear what happened? There was no bread in now. Even in Canaan, did all the land fainted by reason of the bread. Listen. And Yusuf gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought, and Yusuf brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Y'all hear that? He took up all the money, brought it into Pharaoh's house. Come on, son. And when money failed in the land of Egypt. When and, money wasn't good no more. What happened, son? And in the land of Canaan. Yeah. All the Egyptians came unto Yusuf and, and said. Then, what happened, son? Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Yeah, the money ain't no good no more. Give us bread. Come on, son. And Yusuf said, give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. You hear that? If the money don't work, give me your cattle. And I'll give you some food. Come on, son. And they brought their cattle unto Yusuf, and Yusuf gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks 
and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. Listen. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year, and said unto him, What they say, son? We will not hide it from my Allahim, how that our money is spent. My Allahim also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Allahim, but our bodies and our lands. You hear that? Only thing left, we ain't got no more money. Got no more cattle, no more sheep. All we got is our body. What happened, son? Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? I don't see why we should sit here and die. Right before you and our land. What happened, son? By us. By who? By us. By who? Us. Uh-huh. And our land. Yeah. For bread. What happened, son? And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. What happened, son? And Yusuf brought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. Now, what do you start to look at now? See, when you get pushed to a point, you start to realize exactly what it takes for you to survive. You got to give up yourself. See, if any man going to come unto me, he want to deny himself. So at the first, they were able to give their money. Their money carried for a while. But after a while, all the money fell. Then they were able to give away some other things and say, we'll give away our cattle and we'll give away these things. But then after a while, they realized, ain't nothing else. All I got left is myself. So now you can see when he start telling you, present your bodies. Kodash, this is something he'll accept. This is something that'll make sufficient for you, you'll survive. But what happened with us a lot of times, we keep thinking our things are going to keep us out here surviving. See, eventually what you got going to wind up failing. See, a lot of these things you're looking at now, this ain't the, well, the first time it happened, but it ain't going to be the last time. See, you're going to wind up having to take your mall. Otherwise, you ain't going to buy or sell. They became pharaohs. They became owner property of pharaoh. I'm going to know what's mine. That's the only way you got seed. That was the only way you got land. That's the only way you was able to survive and work. What you think going to wind up happening to get us down and get us reduced we're not going to be able to eat? Huh? What you think going to happen when you wind up sitting out here and your money ain't good no more? How long they been telling y'all that the American currency ain't going to be no good? You still stupid, though. You ready to kill and wait. You looking to miss out their feet so you can go get some. They told you this stuff ain't going to be no good. They gathering it up. They getting y'all set up for these cars already. I was in Sweden, me and somebody brought a few years ago. He'll tell you, they didn't even want money. They won't even take it. They was already implementing no money. In Sweden, there's no money. You will swipe a card. We're going to keep track and everything you got, and you're going to receive this if you're going to wind up being here apart. Now, you think if they were mine, don't you know it's already a given? Anything that's mine, these white folks teach you, I'm going to put a mark on it. When they had cattle, they just kept their cattle and left them out of what they do. You're going to put a mark on them. There's got to be something to differentiate yours from somebody else's. Even when our father, you, uh, you're cold. When he kept laboring, something different. The colors, the shape of them, something's going to differentiate you. Now you start to look at when you become healed. You were already told by our law that you had to put, what was again? Now it makes sense when he looked at the cattle, which were actually sheep. They had the ring streaking. They had the ones that were spotted, and they had the solid color. There's got to be something to differentiate between what's mine and what's yours. Y'all got it? So once Pharaoh took possession of them, do you know this is going to separate you from everybody else? Everything I own is mine. Y'all all right? Amen. Let's see someone. See, that's Timothy. Uh, Second Timothy. Let me see what I want. Second Timothy chapter 2 right quick. Verse 17. Let's see what it says. Other brother, you see that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18 for me. 20 come to mind. It's all the same word, ain't it? Amen. Y'all have a name for that too. Let's see what happens. Listen to the book. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Yes. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have hey, erred. Listen. Saying that the resurrection is past already. And did what, son? Overthrow the faith of some. That's why you got to watch it. Shaul told y'all evil communication corrupt good manners. Told you to wait the righteousness, sin not for some. 
If you tell me it done passed, there's some ignorant, there's some ignorant people came out the other day trying to tell them what they don't believe the Mashiach had died. Black. Big stink. Big stink. Cigarette. Earring. Woman talked more than the man. Mm. Man sat there looking like Rick Fox. Ain't old men mouth. No Rick Fox ain't hard to get in the game. <laughs> Couldn't get a word in. They're all the talking. They already said uh, resurrection done passed already. We ain't had it yet. And they overthrow the faith of something. You won't bring that junk in here, though. I tear it down. I rip the rim down. You don't bring it in here, though. I tear it down. Y'all hear me? Amen. Listen, I made Rick Fox go back to Vanessa Wig. Hey. Listen to the book. Nevertheless, the foundation of Allahim standeth sure. Y'all pay attention. The foundation of what now? Allahim standeth sure. Tell me what we got, son. Having this seal. What happened, son? Yahuwah knoweth them that are his. So we're going to look at two words. We're going to look at the toot. That's going to be a mark. And we're going to look at who? Zachariah. Yah has marked. Yah has marked. Right? Amen. Having this seal, the what now? Yahuwah knoweth them that are his. So you think Pharaoh ain't going to know who is his? If I'm going to be giving out seed, if I'm going to be giving life to you because you finna die, you don't think I'm going to know who mine? You don't think I'm going to know what belonged to me? Yahushua told you in the 10th chapter of the book of uh, you, you can on. He told you, I told you, you believe not. The works I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. As I said, mine, who was it? Hear my what? Boy. And I do what? And what they do? Solomon. I know you. He said, I know them because I bought you. I purchased you. I know what's mine. Huh? I know what's mine. Y'all all right? Amen. Even when Laban came and he went through, um, Rebecca, when he went through all of um, your cold and them stuff, he didn't take nothing. What was he looking for? I know what's mine. He was looking for what belonged to him. That's all he was looking for, what belonged to me. I know what's mine. Just like, Yahushua, I, just like Yahuwah, having this seal, I know what's mine. Yeah. And every, let every man that named the name of Yahushua do what, son? Depart from iniquity. What did you say? Oh, he said it. He was feeling good, wasn't he? It's that bad. <laughs> so we start to look at the changes that have to be made. Look at the um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Six and eighteen to be fine. Back up, make it about seventeen. Listen. But he that is joined unto Yahuwah is one spirit. He that is joined to Yahuwah is one ruach. Ruach. Come on. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication. What did he do, son? Sinned against his own body. I want you on presenting me, so I keep you from committing these sins. You give it to me. It belonged to me at this point. Listen. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKadosh? Which who? Is in you. Yes. Which ye have of Allahim, and ye are not your own. What? For and ye, ye are who? Ye are not your own. Tell me what happened. For ye are bought with a price. Didn't Pharaoh pay for him? Mm. You don't buy, you've been bought with a price. Therefore? Glorify Allahim. In your what? Body. And? In your ruach. Who they belong to, son? Which are Allahim. They belong to your ruler. They belong to your ruler. You're not your own. And the problem we got with you guys, you still belong to yourself. You still got your own possession, your own way. And that's the problem we got. That's why he need that young man to sell what he had. If you sold what you had, then you could belong to me. But as long as you got those things, I can't actually properly own you and give you life. Because as long as you got those things, you got something you can always look to. And that's why a lot of y'all fall short at because you keep thinking your whole existence is through your job, it's through your things, it's through your connection of people, and it's not. And as long as you keep them, they wind up being your fault. See, you don't see it going to be a family that's going to come on the land. At the book of uh, Amos, chapter 8 at verse 11. Amos. Amos 8 and 11.
Listen. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, Allahim. Listen. That I will send a famine in the land. See, y'all don't realize something. This is a vision. This is a kazoom. See, this ain't the first time. That's how we got to the 47th chapter of the book of Barashit. Huh? Pharaoh had had a dream. And none of his wise men, nobody was able to answer or be able to expound to him the dream. But Yusuf could interpret the dream. And let he knew about the sheep, and he knew about the time. And what were the time limit of these things? Seven years. We happen to be in for a seven-day feast. We happen to wind up being for a seven-day feast. He let him know about the seven good years and the seven bad years. And he let him know that he should, sort, he should seek him out a man who will be wise enough to make preparation and set these things up that he can make preparation. See, the other people didn't know it was going to be a famine in the land. They didn't know it was going to be a famine in the land. But Pharaoh had already had a vision, already had a kazoon concerning this. And he wound up setting Yosef up and let him know and made his word the second highest in the land. That everything in the land had to go through him. He said, there's no other voice in the land higher than mine. Say the seat of Pharaoh himself. And he had enough sense to stalk and put those things up. So when the famine came, the people had to come see him. Huh? The people had to come and see him. And they were going to eat. They were going to come and they were going to sit. And they were going to see him if they were going to eat. If you were going to survive. Now we sit here and we're looking now, he tell us. It's going to come to pass. There's going to be a famine in the land. Tell me about the famine, Sam. Not a famine of bread. You ain't got to worry about that one. He know you get a little smarter. Y'all got bank accounts. You save a little better. Some of y'all got these new little things you can freeze and put food up now. You learn how to preserve now. I already know you. He know you. I already know you know how to put up. Mama always used to say, put some back. Don't eat everything you got. Don't spend everything. Put some back. So you make a preparation because you figure we had famines before. So I don't want you to think it's going to be a famine. Of what was it, son? Of bread. Or what else, son? Nor a thirst for water. That's going to come to pass because we're going to start looking at who? All Yahoo. Oh, yeah. All Yahoo. All Yahoo. It wound up being a famine. When it came thirst, three years and six months, it rained not. There was no mem. That's why it's so important that we sit here in this month. This month, this feast represents each of them steady flow. A steady flow. So what happened, son? But of hearing the words of Yahuwah. That's why our problem going to come. That's why our problem come in, of hearing the word. What's going to happen, son? And they shall wander from sea to sea. They're going to be traveling from sea to sea. And from the north even to the east. Tell them what happened, son. They shall run to and fro. Seeking? To seek the word of Yahuwah. And what they going to get? And shall not find it. Because they're not going to have somebody skilled enough that's set over them. They'll be able to tell the people and get the people set so you can receive the meal. So you can get the living bread that come down. Because you got to look at what does it take for you to accomplish it. You got to get rid of some things you got. You got to go without some things. Now you put in a situation in a state to where now it should, you should lose something. It should cost you something. And the problem is with us, the truth be told, you've been committing sin and doing wrong. You've been coming and going, and someone has always met the bill for you. Can we look at something right quick? Now, I ain't hear but a couple of voices, Dave and a couple more, whatever. I mean, he need to shut up. I'm home. Don't worry about it. Family coming. Huh? Man, don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Whatever you ain't got, you ain't going to get it anyway. And I used to keep killing down with it. I just want to make sure you know something anyway. Because y'all keep sitting around looking to do something, you don't realize something. It's got to be an expense. Y'all know that? It's got to be an expense. But you know you don't kind of consider no neat thing. See if that's um, Dabari Hayama. Olive. Hayama. 21. Dabari, Hayamum, Aleph, which is what? This will be the first. Let's just look at something. 21. 
the one. Y'all got a second? Fine, check the other one. I know it's still what they call someone got to go to work. I know someone going to work during the feast. And I didn't say no sin, so please don't go take that and say what I said. I have folks all around at me, oh, what you down to do? I ain't going to my job. I, it like I be saying, you ain't going to use me, niggas. Let me tell you what y'all going to do. Whatever you're going to stand, you're going to do. That's your decision. That's right. You ain't going to use me because you ain't shoving your bills in my face. Because some of y'all are going to get fired anyway. You're going to try to use their feet. You're not going to use me. Whatever decision you make, you stand on. This is your faith, not mine. I know what I believe. I know what folks been trying. Now I'm going to try to use me. What you think? Folks be to work in five minutes. You think I ought to go? Because some tell me, yeah, some tell me you already fired. Y'all yeah, ain't going to try to use me. Let me tell y'all, every one of y'all of him. When y'all hear the call for you to come and do what you got to do, they, you know what you're obligated to do. You do what you're supposed to do. Don't try to use me. I don't know why y'all need nobody to pump. I ain't need y'all to pump me up. What you believe, what you going to do? Y'all hear me. Don't be going to, you going to go to work, nigga? Don't be trying to put nobody on your face. Everybody here, you know where you at. Don't be where you need to be when that man come back here. You know where you going. Mm. Y'all hear me? It's just being honest now. A lot of us, we've been doing stuff a long time, and we overstand and over-obligate ourselves to do stuff. Then they come out when the man calls to do something. That's why our problem come in there. Y'all hear me? I'm just telling you, I know what y'all be trying to do. Don't be trying to use me. Y'all ain't going to put me in that junk. I just watch y'all try to pull that last-minute nigga stuff. Don't pull that fall down stuff stuff on me. Rent due. Ain't that right? Whatever you obligate, you know where you at, and you know where you need to be in your walk. Don't be trying to use nobody what you think I ought to do. I wouldn't do nothing. I got to ask nobody else what I believe. Huh? Shaul said, I know in whom I believe, and I'm persuaded here to keep that which I committed. I ain't got to ask you now. I don't need you to persuade me to do nothing. Isn't that right? He said, I know in whom I believe. I'm not ashamed. Say that what I want. So say that um, first uh, Timothy, say that 1 and 12. Let's say that what I want. First Timothy 1 and 12. Let's say what I want. Word right. I'm trying to push me. They think they be slick in here. They always trying to use me. Don't be trying to use me. They think I'm going to be sitting up with no eight months of your rent. You don't stand on faith. You need to stand out there on it. I still want that. I'm going to show you how they're going to work, though. Give me, you still got me that Daba Rehayama. It's the second Timothy 2 and 12. Appreciate it. Bet. B-Y-T-H. Bet. Listen. Second Timothy 1 and 12? Second Timothy 1 and 12. Give me 10. It's the same word. Come on. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Come on, son. Who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Listen. When to I am appointed a preacher and, and an apostle and a teacher of the of the Gentiles, yeah. for the which cause I also suffer these things. Now, they the have last, another word for it. I think they call it ethos. They try to say that Pastor Shaul would have never said Gentile after exhaustive studies. He would say ethos, I think is the correct pronunciation, which means other people. What does Gentile mean? Other nationality. So I give a flying flip about ethos. Gentile, same thing. What I care about what you call another nation. Huh? Who know what the Hebrew name is for Pilate? It's called nigger. They had no salvation, no Pilate's name. His name is nigger in Hebrew, English, Latin, and Greek. <laughs> and Arabic. Y'all hear? Arabic. I can care less. We don't use it anyway. I don't care about it. There's no salvation. Ethos or Gentile. That makes no bearings on us. They both mean of the nation. Nations that are not of the Abarim or the Yahudim. Y'all got it? Amen. So don't kill yourself trying to exhaust yourself on some of this stuff. That has no bearings on us. Y'all got it? Amen. Only reason we'll be learning Greek and we will be moving to some Greek. Simply because we need to know what these people are doing because they've hid some of our knowledge inside their language. When you go and look at their separate that stuff they got written out, that stuff they taken from us that they written in Greek. They have some of our information that they've taken and they putting it in Greek. They do. Y'all just don't know it. Let me tell you something. Y'all got a lot of work we're going to be doing. We're going to be covering ground. That's why y'all got to get this Hebrew. We got a, hot, we got a lot more work we're going to be covering. You'll be learning that too. And you got other stuff you'll be learning. You'll be learning other books too. 
Your own Bible tells you about other books. Your own Bible tells you about other books. Amen. See, I'm going to tell you what they've done to us. They wind up reducing us to just think that everything, let's just be honest. How many of y'all grew up with, don't add, don't take away from the Bible? You're going to hell. Someone put a hand, hold on for a minute. I'm saying you were going to hell. You say, them jokers scared. I said, I'm going to hell. No, we were all taught you don't add to the Bible or don't take away. If you do, you're going to yeah. hell. That's God's word. How many of y'all yeah. taught that, told that? That's how they got us. True statement. True statement is the mere fact that what they taught you, they themselves transgress. They giving you things in and told you stuff, clearly letting you know that there were other books used. Second Shumuel. 1 and 18, right quick. Since I'm here, I, we kind of going a little different way than I want to go yet, but we got some work. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all going to fall off the wagon. The turns and twists we're going to be making. Some of y'all going to be, you know what? They got certain turns you can make. If you ain't got no seat belt on, there ain't no door on this car either. If you don't know how to grip and get your boot, your booty cheek and grab that seat <laughs> and hold on, you uh, use that booty like Felicia and, um, and um, Lockerness, y'all in trouble. And you can throw them booties, you're a good booty thrower. You can flip the car over, no seat belt and no room, no joke, still be stuck to the seat. I don't even know what I said just now. Just follow me anyway. <laughs> Beth, chapter 1, Beth, B-Y-T-H, 118. Matter of fact, make it 117. Let's read down. Let's see what he told you. Listen. And Daoud lamented with this lamentation. Now, Daoud wound up lamenting. He wound up crying concerning this. Listen. With this lamentation. Lament. Then he lamented. We'll actually say he did what, brother? Eka. Howling. Eka, that means howling. We don't have a book of lamentation. We have Eka. Yerim Yahoo never wrote a book of lamentation. He wrote a book of Eka. It means, it means howling. Y'all got it? Now listen to what Daoud did. Come on, son. And Daoud lamented with this lamentation over Shaul and over Jonathan, his son. Listen. Also, he bade them. Listen, also now he made them. He told them. What he told them, son? Teach the children of Yehuda. Then he wanted to teach the Yahudim. What he wanted to teach them, son? Oh, the I mean, teach Yah Yehuda. Come on. The use of the bow. He wanted to teach them how to use the bow. Listen where it was at. Behold. What about it, son? It is written in the book of Jasher. Now, what's the purpose of it being now? I think his name actually would have been pronounced Yesher. Not Jesha, because we don't have a J. But let me clear that up. But you see where your own book, so that's not the only one. You had the book of Nathan, the book of Edu. You also had in the book of um, Yehuda, when he told you about Enoch, the eighth from Adam. What did he told you he did? Mm -hmm. He said he prophesied of these things. How would he know that if it wasn't written? How would he know that Enoch prophesied? How would he know what he prophesied if you weren't there? So it had to be written down. How would Yehuda, a man that had been with Yehusha, had known what Enoch prophesied if, he didn't, if it wasn't written down? He knew he was the eighth from Adam because you can clearly go to Barashit and you can see his linen and it'll show you he was number eight. How would he know what he prophesied? If they didn't use the book, why did Dawood Dao tell him to go get it? But I'm going to tell you how they programmed us. They programmed us to stay with these 66. 66 he lied in. 66 he forged. Then he clearly tells you about other books that are in your book written, and you don't even look at them. That's how he keep us away. There are too many things they say and do. We don't have no writing for it. We just say, that's just faith. That don't make sense. That's not, that don't make sense. I got to hear something to believe it. It comes from somewhere. Their statement made that thing we love. We just say, oh, all oh, that's a mystery. No, it's not if it concerns the law. He told her the secret thing belonged to Yahuwah. But those that are what? Written. 
They belong to us. Now, why are we not taking what belonged to us? Amen. All we've taken is what this white slave master has given us. And now he made us just disannoy every other book. But yet you read a book that he been told you, don't add and don't take away. How do you know that thou would told him that if you don't have it? Who told you he said that statement that he used the book of, of Joshua? How do you know that? Because you don't have it in here. You had it and you took it out. That's exactly what he did. He had it and he took them out. He know what he's doing to us. Let me tell you something. You sat around and you wait on your slave master to okay. Everything been okay, the white man done okay to tell you. Everything you've been told been good, a white man told you. White man told you milk. Now they come back and tell you milk is not for you, milk's for babies. That ain't, I don't know why you waited. He told you, let's look at the book of Arborine right quick. Arborine 5 and 1. Yeah. I've been told y'all about that. You still a milk eater, you hypocrite. I t I've been told y'all a dog don't belong in your house. He told you before I told you. He told you without a dogs. Without me outside. That's where a dog belong. Why would he tell you that if you're the Yahoo Dean? You should already know that. He told you because you already know what I teach you. We don't put no dog in no house. That white folks stuff. Any nation can do it with us. They can cook it, Chinese and, and Japanese can cook it and put it on the dinner table. We keep it outside. Listen. You want verse 12? Verse 12. Maybe Amen. verse 11. One Amen. time, son. Of whom we have many things to say. Tell them what happened, son. And hard to be uttered. Seeing what happened. You are dull of hearing. That's the truth what I got in here. They dull of what I have to tell them. Listen. For when the time ye ought to be teachers. Have need to what, son? That one teach you again. Listen. Which, which be the first principles of the oracles of Allah. That the first pr principles are elementary codes. What tell them happened, son? And are become such as have need of milk. And become such as have what? Need of milk. Tell them what happened, son. And not of strong meat. Tell them why, son. For every run, every one that useth milk is what? Unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Wow. Who should be drinking milk according to what you just read? Baby. A baby. No grown person got no business drinking. I remember growing up, Oreo cookies and milk. All that, I remember all that junk, teenager eating that junk. The boy just told you, so you should know this. Why should you know this? Who should have taught you this? Who should have gave you this? You should have known this. What am I? I get paid. Leon said I'm getting paid. No, nah, they probably look at some of them. What you got? Yes, Yahoo? Yes, sir, I'm finna do it. Yes, sir, I'm finna open it up. He told me to keep the pen. He tried to go get my check. You're done. Barashit. Barashit, chapter 21. Barashit, chapter 21, verse 7 be fine. Oh, this is the book. Amen. Let's see what the book says. Listen. And she said, Hold on, man, man, verse 6. Well, oh, verse 7, fine. Look what happened. And she said, Who would have said unto who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah, Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him breastfed. Who would have said she's gonna be breastfed? For I have borne him a what, son? Son. When? In his old age. Talk to me, son. And the child grew. The child what? Grew. The child what? Grew. The child what? Grew. Tell him what he did, son. And was weaned. I don't know what they done, son. That's the Gamal. I've been teaching these folk this stuff. The book, they book him. All reason I go to it, the book of Romans, the 15th chapter, four verse, told me what sort of things were written the fourth time, written for what was it? And we threw patient comfort out of what was that in? Might have what? Hope. I got hope. I know when to break a baby off from this. Let me show you how important it is for you to be moved from there. Let's just see what happens, son. Listen. And Abraham made and a who? great... Abraham. And Abraham. And Abraham. What did he do, son? Made a great feast. You know there was sick. Man, I'm throwing... Listen, that boy, off the titty. Everybody that's down here. Mm. No more titty for the boy. The same day that Yatsakuth was weaned. 
The Gemara just told you that. Huh? They don't even realize it's certain stuff I can't even teach them. You know why? Yes, Yahoo son, 28. That's what I do for a living. I shoot all that down. I ain't got no, I tell man, they'll walk and talk. Get them done titties out of them baby mouth. Trying to tell me what these done sorry white folk do. Man, you get a certain name, you get that done tit out of that boy's mouth. You're sitting a nine-year-old crunching on your tit. Tit look like it done been in one of them ninja blenders. Man, you even why that's why we he have us more mimicking. You look, we more mimic the the um the lions. We don't mimic these other people. Hyenas, you know how long they'll they'll let they'll suck longer than any other mammal. They're the longest suckers ever. I don't joke walking around like they got a ding dong and a hole. So back when they don't know what they're doing. You come to look at us, we break them out. You know what? Once they start getting tit, they start chewing on that on that tit. She kicked them jokers out. You done. She started taking them to the key or let them know you can't suck no more titty. She take them right there and she owe them up that bed and let them know it's break right here in the tunnel part. You got to start eating meat. Start eating meat because I got to get you off this tit. You can't build no tit and eat no meat. Y'all sit here and keep baby feeding these babies. When these kids get up, we made a great feast. Get them chilling off this done milk. They don't lie to us all these years. Then you going to tell me he ain't going to know what's good. Why would Abraham sit here and make a feast? You telling me the day this boy was weaned, he was believed to be between two and three years old. One to two, one to three years old that he was weaned. Why are these kids sitting here still drinking milk at two and three and four years old? Once they were off the tent, they ain't had no reason to get them kids no milk. You think he was going to get cow pus? They ain't made sick because left him on the titty. Yeah. I done told these heifers in here before. When these kids get up and they start showing, get them kids off that titty. They got a, what you want a teeth on your titty for? You Janet Jackson going to put an earring in that thing? <laughs> that missile tit. Start sitting out crunching on your titty. That child don't need no titty. You start saying that little shoot up. No, you don't need no titty. Uh -oh. Sign that table. Show how to use that titty. They going to go buy them some, go buy some plastic for them to chew on. They got that too. He don't need me on your titty. He needs some food. Man, these children, that, that old lazy stuff. I've been told y'all cut. This new. Oh. Who been telling them? You know what's bad though? I had to come and learn the book. Been telling them this stuff. This ain't nothing new. Y'all be listening to these white folks come in all the time and tell you the stuff wrong. There's no mammal you're going to find out there on no tit. They got to say they break them away from that tit. You even see no grown cow go reach up on no another cow and start sucking no tit. Cow going to rip that, the cow going to rip out that, take his tail, make a whip and beat that big nigga. What you doing sucking my tit you free? <laughs> They don't do that stuff. We the only backwards people out here. The same day he was broke off that tit, that man throwed a feet. Realize you too big for a tit. Why would a two-year-old be on the tit? See, that give they historical fact. A two and three, why would a two and a three-year-old be sucking a titty? This boy had to be under one. There would make no sense a child one above on no titty. That's freaking. We ain't gonna walk, walk into a titty? Man, that's that Freddy Cougar foolishness. We be watching these white folks, and white folks do it in Europe. They Y'all know they breastfeed up to seven. A seven year, you having sex with this child. This is sex. That boy ain't trying to get no milk. Yeah, to break that stuff. You can't do that stuff. Y'all keep thinking everything's spirit. That stuff not spirit. This man threw a feast. He loved that we celebrate. The boy will get no more tete. <laughs> man, look that. I ain't loaning out that tit no more. <laughs> that baby barring that tit. They ain't charged the key. <laughs> Y'all all right. Nobody else won't teach. I got I give them Bible though, don't I? Yeah, white folks, you go read their little foot. No, he was three years, three years on your tip. That white folks still don't play no fooling like that. Listen to the book. Verse 9. Listen. Whom shall he teach knowledge? What's that, son? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Tell me, son. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Talk to me, son. 
them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All I do, I write it plain upon the table. You read this, you get that tit and run. You read this, you get that tit and run. Time to be teaching them, baby. Baby get one, it's time to start teaching them. They'll start reading book, down reciting book. Then you go put a tit in their mouth. I'm talking to a child, teaching the child how to count, how to stop doing it, and I'm still putting a tit in their mouth. He said, you can't teach them no doctrine. He looked at you, you don't start teaching you stuff. He got no benefit with that tit in your mouth. I'm not trying to teach you how to walk and suck a tent. I'm sending you backwards. That's like a baby that walk, and I'm going to teach him how to crawl. You trying to walk, and I'm teaching you how to crawl? That's backwards. No more tete. Tete, tete, tete. That thing, here come on. That thing ain't right, though. They ain't going to get nobody to tell them. Like, that book, though, they can get how all they want to. I guarantee you how to that book, though. Mm. I guarantee you why I'm going to hell you fight that book, though. That book right. That just teach y'all the truth. Amen. They lied to us. That man told you can't even teach no not to nobody with no titty. Why are you trying to? So you on a the titty. They do it may seem me to try to teach a baby on the titty something. I'm trying to teach a baby sucking a titty how to talk. I'm trying to teach a, he just told you, who am I going to teach knowledge? Who am I going to try to get to understand? Somebody sucking a titty? I'm popping, whipping a child drinking milk. This couldn't be right. That means your two and three year old should never be there. Be, you shouldn't be trying to teach it, but you're going to try to teach the white folk book how to read, recite and do alphabets and count. He said, You can teach her. You ain't got no bend again, no titty. Right. Okay. Is that what y'all read? <laughs> right. Read that again. What did he say, son? Whom? Shall he teach knowledge? And what happened, son? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who am I going to make to understand doctrine? Them that what, son? Them that are weaned from the milk. And well, son? Drawn from the breast. Been taken off milk. They didn't want to train to do that stuff. Stuff ain't no, no, no fascinating. They done lied to us all these years. Milk good for a baby at a certain age. After that, no more milk for no baby. They ain't got no bed with no milk. Baby need to give them what belong to a baby. See them at that tape. Man, let me tell you something. I had to go in the country. They, they ain't my thing, the most high hearing ready to leave me. That I've been jacked up to. Teeth been riding up by my ear. They head down the country. They send them down there. You get it. You send your child out with your baby food and stuff. When you come get your baby, your baby going to be humongous, no shoes, and all your baby from the sitting right there. Never used it. You be not that baby food. What happened? That baby sat at that table. They going to get that collard green, that juice. They going to get yep. that, that cornbread. And Matt, and, get, and stick it right in their mouth. Yep. Your child broke. Yep. You can't get that child that stuff you want. Tell them. When you get back, all your food sitting right there. That child ain't none of that junk. They be like, I ain't forget that baby that stuff. They don't get that car and make that pot look. Your child gonna be ham hawk. Your child gonna be all kinds of stuff when you come back. Your child not get cornbread and do the plate like wipe it like that. <laughs> don't need no spoon. Wait on the spoon. Done. I'm telling they get through with your town. Now, you might have a pot look that. Never. You from the country, you to get out there. Don't get out of that stuff. Let these folks get with that junk. By the time we get our child all that processed junk, then you want all that mess stinks so bad. <laughs> Try to shoot out all that processed mess and junk bagged up. Yeah. They killing our kids. They killing us with this stuff. Yeah. Something down to get them. He told you, man, meat. Get them to us some meat. That man made a feet. What do you think he made them feet that had titties just all around him? Which one you want to suck? Yeah. He ain't call that whole name Yasa. Which one you want, ya? Man, no, sit down, son. We eat meat today. Y'all all right? Amen. That thing ain't right. They don't like that, do they? That thing ain't right, though, boy. Right. What you going to do when that book hits you, though? Yeah. Get, what, that's all we can do. That's, that's the book. Right. That's right. Come on, son. That first, come on, give me that. Let me knock this on out right quick. Why don't you first shoot me off? Like, second, shoot me off. 21. Let me see that what I want. Second, shoot me off. 21 and 1. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Wonderful Husha. Man, that word right. Amen. They folks done programmed us and messed us up so bad. So y'all get ready. We're going to be making some turns, some twists. And our whole way at the end of the day, we're going to get right. If it's in the book, what we're going to do? If you well, believe this book, and the book just told you, now how you going to fight it when we get it? That's how I want to know how you going to fight it if this book just told you about it. Then you don't even believe this book then. 
You've been a hypocrite your whole life. Oh, we done came along and showed you and dispelled where he lied. He misspelled names. He changed characters. All we did is come back and show you the book and write. He just made some twists and turns, and we're going to fix it for you. Now we got to come and unravel some of these lies he done sat here and told you so long. How did you think this everything done happened right here? No, you stupid. Then you was a latter-day saint. Got him riding around on horse and white butt just, just juking people. Jesus was like, ha, yeah. They believe anything these folk tell them. Listen to the book. Then there was a famine in the days of Daoud, three years, year after year, and Daoud inquired of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah answered, It is for Shaul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Come on, son. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Yasharal, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Yasharal had sworn unto them, and Shaul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Yasharal and Yehuda. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, Daoud said unto the Gibeonites, What? Say if it's 20, that's 21. Amen. 21 and 1. Say if it's 22 and 1. I want to see when he numbered the people. I thought it was 22nd Chronicles. I appreciate it. I said Dabariha. I'm sorry. I did tell you Dabariha Yama. I don't know why I sent you back to show me all. That's, um, 21. Dabariha Yama. Amen. Aleph. 21. Listen. And Satan stood up against Yasharal. And Satan did what? Stood up against Yasharal. Talk to me, son. And provoked Daoud to number Yasharal. To do what? To number Yasharal. Listen, what he did. To do what again? To number Yasharal. What happened, son? And Daoud said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Yasharal from Beersheba even to Dan. Yeah. And bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Yeah. And Joab answered, Yahuwah, make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. Yeah. But my lord, the Malak, are they not all my lord's servants? Yeah. Why then doth my lord require this thing? Uh-huh. Why will he be a cause of trespass to Yahshua at all? You hear that? Why, what's your what now? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Yahshua at all? Yeah. Nevertheless, the Malak's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Yasharal and came to Jerusalem. Yeah. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto Daoud. Yes. And all they of Yasharal were a thousand thousand and an hundred thousand men that drew sword. Yeah. And Yehuda was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew sword. Yeah. But Levi and Benjamin counted. What word we look for that? The olive. Y'all remember that to lead about a thousand or thousands? The olive. Come on. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them. His name would be Louis. Not Levi. We don't have an E. I'm correct on this anyway. I might have an A before the Y. I'll see. But his name would be Louis. Not Levi. So you just put that to the side, too, make sure I got the spelling right. Listen. But Louis and... What day was that? <laughs> oh, he had been down there reaching again in that uh, fat wallet out there. Come on. Counted he not among them. Yeah. For the Malak's word was abominable to Joab. Listen. And Allahim was displeased with this thing. Yeah. Therefore he smote Yasharal. And Daoud said unto Allahim, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Come on. And Yahuwah spake unto Gad, Daoud seer, saying, Go and tell Daoud, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. Yes. So Gad came to Daoud and said unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, Choose thee, either three years famine, yeah. or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, yeah. while that the word, the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of Yahuwah, yes. even the pestilence in the land, and the Malachi of Yahuwah destroying throughout all the coasts of Yasharal. Yeah. Now, therefore, advise thyself what word I shall, I shall bring again to him that sent me. Come on, son. And Daoud said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Mm -mm. 
What happens, son? Let me fall now into the hand of Yahuwah. He's able to restrict it. I want to fall in the hands of Yahuwah. Talk to me. For very great are his mercies. Yes. But let me not fall into the hand of man. Yes. So Yahuwah sent pestilence upon Yashorol. Yes. And there fell of Yashorol 70,000 men. Yes. And Allahim sent Amalaki unto Jerusalem to destroy it. Come on. And as he was destroying. What happened? Yahuwah beheld. And he repented him of the evil. Yes. And said to the Malachi that destroyed, It is enough. Yes. Stay now thine hand. Yeah. And the Malachi of Yahuwah stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Yeah. And, De and Daud lifted up his eyes and saw the Malachi of Yahuwah standing between the Aritz and Shamayim. Yeah. Having a drawn sword in his hand. Yeah. Stretched out over Jerusalem. Listen. Then Daud and the elders of Yasharal, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. Yeah. And Daoud said unto Allahim, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Yeah. Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. Yes. But as for these sheep, What happened, son? What have they done? They were not know. Look at these sheep. What have they done done? Come on, son. Let thine hand, I pray thee, Be well. Yahuwah, my Allahim, yeah. be on me. And who else? And on my father's house. Yeah. But not on thy people. But not on thy people. That they should be plagued. Listen. Then the Malachi of Yahuwah commanded Gad to say to Daud. Yeah. That Daud should go up and set up an altar unto Yahuwah in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Which is the open, threshing floor is the opening door. He said, I want you to go up and I want you to do what now? Set up an altar set unto up Yahuwah. A, set up an altar unto Yahuwah. In the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Listen. And Daoud went up the at the saying of Gad. The threshing floor be the opening door. We talk about the opening being the who? The paw. The threshing floor is going to be the door where you enter in at. He wanted to set up an altar. Listen. And Daoud went up at the saying of Gad. And he went up at the saying of Gad, who which was he spake in the name of Yahuwah. Which he spake in the name of Yahuwah. And Ornan turned back and saw the Malachi. Yes. And his four sons with him hid themselves. Yes. Now Ornan was, thre was threshing wheat. Yes. And as Daoud came to Ornan, yes. Ornan looked and saw Daoud. Yes. And went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to Daoud with his face to the ground. Listen. Then Daoud said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor. He told me to grant me this place of the threshing floor. Now he's out gathering wheat. That's on the two time we can gather. It's on the two time we can gather. He said, grant me this place or the threshing floor. What happened, son? That I may build an altar therein unto Listen, Yahuwah. I want to build an altar for Yahuwah. What happened, son? Thou shalt grant it me for the full price. Thou shalt give me a deal. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price. Thou shalt give me some money to help me buy it. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price. Talk to me, son. That the plague may be stayed from the people. That's why some of y'all still got your plague. Listen what happened. And Ornan said unto Daoud. What did he say to Daoud? Take it to thee. Take it to thee. And let my lord, the Malak, do that which is good in his eyes. You hear that? You take it. Don't worry about getting me no money. Do what's, do what's good in your eyes. Go ahead, my son. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for I burnt offering. Now only that, I'm going to give you the oxen too for the burnt offering. What happened, son? And the threshing instruments for wood. And the, and the instruments you need for the wood to make the sacrifice. What happened? And the wheat for the and, meat offering. Listen, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. I give it all. And Come Malak Daoud said to Ornan, What nay. happened? And, and Malak Daoud said to Ornan, What they say the king? The Malak said to Ornan, What did he tell him, son? Nay. No. No. You will not give it to me. Why, son? But I will verily buy it for the full price. I will pay the full price for it. Tell him why, Daoud. For I will not take that which is thine yeah. for Yahuwah. Come on. Nor offer burnt offerings without cost. Got to cost you something. You know what you'll do? Let me get five out put in off. I'm going to go offer something that cost me nothing. I'm going to go give something that cost me nothing. Daoud, he will offer to get it. So listen, you can have that. And the wood, I just finished cutting some wheat, and you can take the wheat. He said, I'm here to make an offering to Yahuwah. Now, I don't see how I'm going to do it, and it don't cost me nothing. This is what a lot of time we lack. 
We always feel like we have to get something to our expense to help us do something. He looked at, it's got to cost me something. I made a trust pass. Now, if I'm coming to try to make a recompense and a amend for my trust pad, it's got to cost me something. Because when it costs me something, then I got something to consider. It's nothing to take something from you, from you, from you, from you to you, but it takes something when I take them myself because I look at, I want to get the thing right. Mm -hmm. I look at my trust pad and wind up falling on a whole lot of other people. My pig-headed moving when I was already told, the most high give you a thousand times more. Why? It makes no sense. Why would you go and do what you're doing and add a trust pad? But nevertheless, being pig-headed, his word prevailed over the, the servant who he sent out to number the people. But later on, it wound up causing that people died. People wound up falling. That a trust pad had been committed against Yashraal. And now he looked at, if I'm going to go and I'm going to repair it, then it's going to have to cost me something. Huh? He couldn't do it at his house. He had to go to the owner's house. He had to go find him, and then he had to pay for the threshing floor. I want you to build. I want you to make something. The same thing y'all here to do now, you're here to build. Because you made trespasses and you made errors in your life before. You've been told everything was going to be given to you, and it wasn't going to cost you nothing, but it's going to cost you something. You're going to have to present your body a living sacrifice. It's going to cost you to lose some things and serve it for some things in order for you to get it right if you're going to obtain the spirit. This is why he was looked at as a man after Yahuwah's own heart. Who you require? Who he, how would he um, name you? How would you be categorized? A person out of his own heart, a person that go after their own covetousness, a person that stays lewd, a person that stay contrary, a person after you get over stuff when you get through getting hurt. He didn't look at it. It's gonna cost me something. He looked at when the people were taken down. Why should these people die because of me? Why should these people suffer because of my trespasses? And if I trespass, it's going to cost me something to get it right. Every one of us. And you don't realize why certain things got to be done and taken away from you. So you can see your transgressions. We've been doing stuff a long time at other people's expense. When does that really cost you anything? Why would Daoud sit here and say it's got to cost him something? He had to put forth some labor and do it. Nothing could be given to him. Because he looked at, I'm here to try to repair a breach that I messed up. And you giving me something ain't going to help it. All your life, somebody's been covering up, standing in, trying to cover for your foolishness and your ridiculousness, stupidity, and you never stood up and took account and just tell the truth, it's me, and I need to get it right. It's me. I've always gotten over and I've always gotten things and it always worked out to where it's to my favor before I do something. Versus, it's not to my favor. I've caused a mess. I caused a mess on me and on my house. And it's time for it to cost me something that I sit here and I become requirable and I become accountable for what I've done so I can get it right. You want something he said it's going to be acceptable. He knew it wasn't acceptable. For me to go give Janae burnt offering? To go get Moses wheat, to go build on rocky threshing floor, you go buy it. He already knew. He told him to make him a sacrifice what he had to do. Just as Abraham knew when he went up, it didn't make sense to go up and say, I know you got about four or five boys. You trust me, don't you? Let me get uh, one of your boys. He already knew it didn't make sense. When he told me to make him a sacrifice, I already knew what he wanted. And it was going to cost me something. If it's going to be something he's going to accept, it's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be something he going to require. It's going to be something that he pleased with. He don't want no abomination. Everything you've been given has been abomination. When you give it, you doubt. When you do it, you mumble and you grumble. So he never accepted nothing you're done. Then you wonder why your plague still stay. You wonder why you still keep going through and catastrophe, keep overtaking you, why you can never get no solace or why you can never get no, why you can ever get no surrender because you've been a rotten crook all your life. Y'all ain't looked at it. It got to cost me something. It's got to cost me something. Huh? Most high been good. I mean, it's got to cost me something. All I get it, people, when if you can give me somewhere to stay, if you can help me do it, if you can help me do it, if you can help me. When is it ever going to cost you something? If you're going to fix something with him, you already know what you got to do. It's going to cost you something. There are some other things I could tell you guys. You're just not privy to it tonight. But I will tell all you this. You got to get to where you stop being you. You got to get to where you get broke 
and broke. When I'm saying broken, some things got to be taken from you. That's going to be the call. You got to be broken. The truth be told, we haven't been broken. We haven't. We, I can watch our faces when stuff don't fix and stuff don't set right, when it's stuff you still doing and you get hit on it, versus you making that change and looking at, I got to get away from it. This is him talking to me because I got to make the transformation. I got to see where this has been my fault. But all I keep asking for, make me right, make me ready, show me the right way. When I do, you ain't never obeyed it. You've never obeyed it. You've never been consistent in nothing you ever done. All your commitments have been lies. All your promises have been faulty. You never in your life ever stayed with nothing that's been right. You look for reason to get off the right path versus stay looking for reason to stay on the right path. So now you look at it, it costs you something. When it starts to cost you something, now you got a reason to stay. Our book teaches us that thou will never turn from nothing you who ever commanded him, save in one mouth. And people go and sin all the time, get who they you? Thou. If you only sin one time, I'll let you off the hook too. Show me you ain't messed up but one time, though. I don't know nobody in no, no ability in no state to go and quote Dawood. Right. If you only messed up one time, I give up my seat. But you know you messed up numerous times. But at some point, you got to start becoming accountable for what you do. And it's got to cost you something. Then you consider. You know, even when you ride down the street, you get a ticket. Let me tell you something. You tell me something that when you running late, and you shoot through, and you ran through the stop sign, or you run a little speed, and you get stopped. Now you're already late. Now you get held up longer. Then you get a ticket to give you a date when you really ain't got time to be there. And when you go, it's crowded, and the ticket, the price don't even make sense for what you've done. But you know why they give you all that? It's to keep you so it won't cause you to do it again. When you look at I give you a ticket, it's way off, and usually when the time come up, you usually got something else to do. And the money you got to pay to use it, you usually need it for something else. To teach you, the only reason I inconvenience you and gave you this high cost, so it keep you from doing it again. Thou would learn something. I ain't even got time to do that again. It put me out of the way. It cost me money, and lives were lost. I assure you, you don't have to worry about me doing this again. One of these days, you need to get to that state where you'll start thinking better. Y'all hear me? Y'all have taken for granted a lot of time, the words you've gotten over a course of time, because you just assume it's going to be there. But I've been telling y'all, that's going to be a famine. Y'all hear me? And when the famine comes, it's going to overtake the most of you, because you just like children. You sit here and been piping to you, but you hadn't danced. Been crying to you, you hadn't lamented. Y'all hear me? At some point, you got to start making change. Every time you don't like something, it's showing your face, which means your face comes from your heart. Which show your heart ain't right and you don't want to get it right. You don't want to get it. There's a lot of stuff out here I don't like. Not physically. Not because I look, I, I gotta look at how it's gonna inconvenience me and things I can get rid of, things I gotta reorganize what I gotta do, but at the end of the day, I gotta look at the bigger picture. Do you want do you wanna be saved? If I wanna be saved, then I can't let what come in and get in my heart, then start to fracture other things in this thing I know I be on the outside. I always got to consider the time and labor I put him into pressure to come here all of a sudden and wind up going to hell for one thing. In that case, I could have been stopped. Y'all got your mind, you don't go all the way. That's why, we've been, that's why this adjustment had to come in. Something had to strike us so you can see. A lot of us have been saying, how do I know? How do I know? Did you adjust? Do you make the adjustment? Do your whole thing in your heart and you still got to keep wrestling versus you make the conversion when you hear the word? Once the word come and give you confirmation, do you change or do you still keep rest? You still keep mum, you still keep your prayer. Just a matter of time, you're going to find yourself on the outside. Listen, when Ananias and Sapphira, when everybody came and sat and paid, laid them down at the apostles' feet, what did they do? They kept back part of the goods. Why do you think all these things are happening? They will be picked out. Because it shows you where your heart at. He told you, where a man heart at, that's where it treasure at also. And they showed enough of their heart that their death, their demise, why not coming, it put the fear on everybody else. See, sometimes in other people's losses and other people getting taken out of him, it put fear. It's a matter of time before he come through him. Some of you going to come up dead. But it's going to be a good thing for the rest of us. Honestly, it's going to be a good thing. Ananias and Sapphira's death was a good thing to the congregation. Fear fell on everybody else. Probably wouldn't have happened. Everybody probably thought they were good and you just keep going. Hmm? 
when Dawood now were praising Yahuwah and they were gone and one of them fell, uh-uh, bring that thing, bow, and touch the Ark of the Covenant. What was the, what were he told? Don't think because you're in a high that this allow you to transgress. Dawood became angry. But Yahuwah looked at, I don't know why you're angry with me. I already told you no man would have touched the Ark of the Covenant. Because you were praising, you got high, and you were feeling, and that's why we get messed up. Because you get your highs, and you get your lows, you get your time where you take off and you run. You think this allows you to escape what he told you? The words still stand. The words still stand regardless of how you feel. Whether you upset, whether you happy, whether you glad, whether you sad, whether you poot or pee. The word hadn't changed. He told you the word is settled in Shamayim. Newark. The word is settled. After the rains and everything descended, the ark wound up selling itself. And it ain't moving. So when he set it down here for us and told us what it is for us to do and how we got to live, you got to set your mind. That's what you got to do to be saved. So I encourage every one of y'all in here, it going to cost you something. I try to help you as much as I can help, but be honest with y'all. Be honest with y'all. I got a lot of babies. I ain't got the titties. I got some brothers here can feed some of y'all. I don't know what kind. It's going to be some dirty milk now. I wasn't drinking, even if I was thirsty. But at some point, every one of us in him, you got to sit down. You got to take inventory. And you got to set yourself, and you got to start realizing you here because you committed trespasses. And you've been saying you want to get it right. But the truth been told, you've been carried and told it and baby and made way and prepared for you. And it's never really cost you nothing. It's never really cost you nothing. And you're going to get it right. Make sure it costs you something. That's good, brother. Amen. Amen.